Welcome Walnut. I'm Lara, but you can call me Laz, your host for Walnut Wednesday. This is your reminder to be brave, be yourself, and know that you can make the world a better place just by what you decide today. Here, I'm going to share my weekly walnutings with you on a Wednesday. Hello, Walnut. It is me, Laz, here for another episode of Walnut Wednesday, and I'm so excited to finally have my beautiful friend visiting the podcast, Jilly, or known as Jillian Elise. Hello, welcome, beautiful, delicious banana. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, Laz. It's so nice to finally be here. Oh, thank you so much for visiting us. Uh, So, Walnut, Jilly and I actually are friends in real life. We have met at, gosh, what was it, Jilly? a Jackie Siv event, I think, 50 billion years ago. And then we randomly bumped into each other again at a cacao ceremony, I think it was, um, finding out that we, like, live really close by. So I love that we know each other already. (laughs) Now makes this a lot easier for me. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So um, it was Walnut, one of my first ever, like, Walnuttings of going out to meet more, like, people into the woo-woo things. I remember it was such a walnutting. I went with a friend of mine and yeah, Jilly and Nicole Middleton and Unghard, we all went out for lunch after this little event and it was just like this big, it was this big thing for me. I remember at the time, it feels so long ago now, um, but we it, went it was a good time. Botanist in um, Lyle Bay, I think we went to. Yeah, yeah. that's right. That's right. Oh, and yeah. it was so yummy. I remember Burgers. I was thinking about that place today, actually. I was like, what was that place called? Um, yeah, it, yeah. Um, in Wellington, Walnut, if you're not from around here. But Jilly, before we get rambling and talking about burgers and food, <laughs> um, can you please introduce yourself to the Walnuts who may not have met you before? Yes. Yeah, so um, my name is Jillian Elise, or Jilly, if you've just seen me on the street. Um, yeah, so I'm originally from Canada. I moved to Wellington after my intuition kind of told me that this was my home um, when I, I came here on a holiday working visa in 2014. And when I was here, my intuition whispered to me like this was my home. And I was kind of like, what? <laughs> no, go away. Um, and then I moved to Nelson for a while. And then when I came back to Wellington again before eventually leaving New Zealand, which was I thought was for good, um, coming in on the ferry from the South Island and seeing like the Wellington skyline, my intuition again was like, this is your home. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> um, but then I left New Zealand, was away for, I think, yeah, I left in 2015, ended up coming back in 2018 because I was miserable. Like every single day, my intuition was like, go to New Zealand. New Zealand is your home. Go back to New Zealand. And I was just like, no, it's going to be way too hard don't know how it's going to happen, but I decided to finally say like, fuck it, I'm just going to go. And if it works out, it works out. If it doesn't like worst case scenario, I'll go back to Canada yeah. and it's all worked out. I'm now a resident, which is wonderful. Yay. Um, yeah. So everything came together in ways as you, I'm sure you're aware of, like, you never know how to plan it. And it's like things that would have happened that I didn't even think could have ever happened for it to mm-hmm. come into fruition. Anyhow. Um, yeah. So now living in Wellington, New Zealand, um just yeah living my best life really yeah just like connecting with the magic of everyday life and like finding my joy and seeing how much fun I can have while like playing the game of life essentially which is yeah which is a really unique and special experience yeah and that's exactly what I'm looking forward to chatting to you about today Jilly is like you do have this like fun like vibe to everything that you Put out there you know you always it's like always trying to see the bright side while also you really have that polarity going on of like if you're not feeling well you're really like articulate with that kind of thing as well so um I'm really looking forward to getting into how you can kind of like manage the flow not the scale the flow of of joy and rain <laughs> however yeah, like, yeah the polarity and like learning how to balance it all and hold it all with love is I think really what I try to do every day even when something sucks I'm like okay how can we make the best of this situation and how can we learn from it and really bring like my deep joy for life never fades even in the dark moments it's it's just always there yeah definitely um can you please just go back to you mentioned a lot of 
um, through your introduction, your intuition. And I know that Walnut's listening, they know all about what it means and, and everything, but can you please tell me how you know, because I found this such a struggle, especially at the beginning of my Walnut journey, how do you hear it or feel it? How do you like, what was that pull? Can you describe mm -hmm. it? So I, I'm intuitive in a few different ways. I'm, I think everyone is kind of intuitive in every yeah. single way, but obviously you have like one or two that are most prominent. Um, so one of mine more prominent was ones is um, clear audience. So I, I hear yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, it's always, it always feels like it's coming from here, like not beside, but like just behind the right side of my head. Um, and it's just always like soft little whispers, like so loving, even when my intuition, what I, what I say is like, was mad at me for not coming to New Zealand or, you know, initially yeah. being like, oh, it's too hard. No, it's too hard. Like pushing it aside. It's still very loving, but it's, it starts to become like a little bit more firm, but it's like, just go to New Zealand, like just do it. But it's like, just do it. It's okay. Like it's, it's very calm. So I know, yeah, the difference for me between like, that voice is like calming and loving as opposed to like the ego side, which is always like a bit frantic and kind of mm -hmm. sounds angry or upset. And then it causes more mind fuckery, I suppose. Cause you're like Ugh, with ego words. Yeah. Intuitions is always very calm and loving. So, you know, it's yeah. coming from a place of like a higher self kind of position as opposed to ego. Yeah. And I found I had to get to quite a place of, um, quiet to be able to really like hear myself or hear decisions I want to make and really separate myself from like my phone from work from friends if I have a really big decision I need to make I really I like to go and ask for opinions and like see what everyone has to say and, and advice but then mm -hmm. I get this sort of like intuitive I don't really know how or where but there's a cutoff point where I'm like okay I've asked, I've got received all the information I need to find now I just need to go sit by myself in Walnut HQ or outside or wherever to be yeah. able to like percolate the information and then make the choice myself. And I think you represent really well that, um, what's that word? That decision, that self-decision and sitting with it and backing yourself. And I think it's a testament to um, your people pleasing and boundary setting and I'd love to go into a little bit about that like can you talk to us a little bit about the the people pleaser journey I call myself a recovering people pleaser because um it's still a work in progress and it still pops up no matter how many boundaries you feel like you've smashed and nailed um it still pops up so I'd love to just get on the topic of boundary setting yeah um it's been a journey mm -hmm. <laughs> it's very hard but I've started to notice, um, like, you know, the law of patterns. So I've, I've started to notice like every time I step up and I set a boundary, mm -hmm. I notice the pattern that on the other side of setting that boundary, I'm like rewarded in some way. So mm -hmm. um, either like something that I've been trying to manifest will come into my life or like something really simple, like someone will come into where I'm currently working and like bring me a gift or like someone will say something really kind about me that like, they'd never said ever before in their life. Like something always happens on the other side of me setting boundaries where I'm rewarded to be like, good job. Like it's like winks from the universe say, yes, you're on the right path with setting your boundaries and taking your own energy back. Um, but it's, yeah, it's always a process. It's still kind of very like, you know, if it's in a text message, cause I, cause I'm so far away from all my friends and family and with people I need to be setting boundaries with sometimes it's always really scary. Cause you can send it in a text and you reread it so many times. You're like, oh, okay. Like one, two, three, son. Ugh. And then you're like, don't want to look at the phone for ages. Cause you're like, oh my God, like, how are they going to respond? Yeah. It's just like, like calm yourself to be like, it doesn't matter how they respond. Like you're doing this for you. Like you've done the hard part now. Sometimes there's a second hard part, which is if you have to be involved with setting the boundary. Like, so if you say to someone like, Hey, I'm, you know, I've been kind of picking up the slack here. I don't want to be doing that anymore. I need more 50, 50 or something like you also have to show up and not continue to do the thing that you said you're not going to do. So in that regard too, there's kind of like two sets to a boundary setting, but sometimes mm -hmm. the first step is always to communicate. And I think if you have those feelings inside, like slight resentment, like that's where you kind of know that you need to be setting a boundary. Um, 
And if you can feel like you're wanting to communicate something, but it kind of all gets like stuck in your throat. I also kind of feel that sometimes. So yeah, I also am like, okay, if I feel like something is stuck here, like I need to be communicating that. So it's, yeah, I think first with the boundary setting, like starting with people that you care about just with like really small ways or just even saying, hey friends, like I'm going to be, you know, trying something different and starting to set boundaries. Like I would really appreciate if like, you respected me or like, um, you know, was in my corner. So if I need support, like you're there. So you're kind of also communicating what your plan is going to be and not just coming out with it so that you have the proper support behind you as you start to learn these new processes and um, yeah, start to learning how to set boundaries and communicate properly. Yeah. I love that advice. Thank you so much. And do you have like a, an example, I know this is on the spot. So at the top of your head, if there is something of where you received that, like, reward that I like I like that idea of um what did you say the law of patterns and how mm. um you 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 do the brave step and set the boundary which is really scary and really hard and you go through all the things um and then you get a little treat and I'd love to know if you can think of something on the spot um yeah. where that happened yeah um it's even like I think this was kind of like a combination between setting a boundary and just me showing up as myself like I find the more weird self that I bring to the table like outwardly the more people like react to that strangeness but in a really beautiful way like people that aren't don't resonate with it like I don't even notice anymore but the people that do like it's like they're magnetized and it's really interesting to witness um but I think it was last week or the week before I set a boundary with one of my family members and was basically like I I'm not willing to talk about these types of things anymore until you're willing to actually kind of take ownership for those things rather than continuing to complain about the same things and not actually trying to do anything about it. Like I can't keep having the same conversation yeah. um, cause it's an energy drain. So um, yeah, so I was like that. And then piggybacked on top of like the last week of my work, like I dressed up kind of Christmassy every single day and um, just like with stupid little headbands or these sorts of things, like really putting myself out there, which for me, I was always like, I don't want people to notice me for ages. So um, yeah, I was rewarded. Like uh, a customer gave me like a Christmas gift. I had another customer that came in and brought me like a bouquet of flowers from her garden. And I'm just like, why? It's so nice. Thank you. (laughs) It's just like, it's so kind and like things that I, you know, I don't expect those things at all, but it's just like these little winks being like, yeah, you're on the right path by like being more yourself, like outwardly. And it's, it's such a beautiful journey to see. Oh, I love that. And I love that you got treats and gifts and just recognized for for being yourself. And I love that mindset of considering that a uh, gift from the universe that you are on the on the right track for doing these little bits of brave. Cause yeah, it, it is hard to kind of come out <laughs> as yourself. Because for so long, I think growing up, especially through teenage years, you really just have no idea who that actually is. And then when you're coming into the this is me and okay, I'm I'm starting to accept that, um, it gets a little bit nerve-wracking because you've not for me, I hadn't behaved, you know, in in that way. I'm so introverted that it's like actually really ridiculous. I get very, very tired in m- many social situations. But, um, you know, I used to be the party girl. I used to be the loud one that danced on the tables so that you'd like invite to the thing because it was boring. You know, like I used to be really like that. So people were like, what the hell? You're not extroverted. Uh, you're not introverted, you know, like you're an extrovert. You're like loud and, you know, but I'm not like that. And I know that for myself. And so, yeah, the, these little things that we kind of adapt as like true selves into not adapt you know what I mean climatize into our true self um yeah I like that idea of of getting of getting a reward for it (laughs) and you described yourself Jilly as like a unicorn like magical and I'd love to just like talk about what it like how does that feel within you to be like hello I'm so magic I'm a unicorn this is me like I feel like it would have been hard at first to just sort of try to be okay. How did you, how did you get to where you are now where it's like this contentness? Um, I'd love to talk about, you know, the walnutting and the bravery that it would have taken to declare yourself as the magical unicorn named Jilly. <laughs> yeah. 
So like, I've always been one, but I've never like been outward with it. Like I've always believed that I, I am a unicorn and my best friend as well. Like we've known each other since we were four. Like she is also a unicorn. So we've been like two bestie unicorns, like in the world together. But, um, we all, we both bring completely different magic to the world. And, um, yeah, I think like connecting with, I think I do believe that every single person on this planet is magic. And I think that a lot of people are disconnected from that. So what I hope to like, I guess, bring into the world is people to be able to recognize the magic within themselves to create a magical life. And like, I love unicorns. Like, I think they're silly, like they're fun. Like who the fuck cares? It's like, yeah. Or like it doesn't really like it's just it's just fun and like it's like well how how like that is what's fun is to me is like just being silly and really connected with my inner child and like always wanting to laugh and yeah just finding joy in like really simple simple things that people are like why do you find that so amusing it's like well why not it's it's just fun like that's that's all what we're here for in life is to have fun and if that means like telling everyone that I'm a magical unicorn which is what I really believe like yeah that's what I do um but yeah it's been a process to like get there and like admit that outwardly to people without being people thinking like oh like what do you mean and kind of people second guessing me or people thinking that I'm strange like I don't care about that anymore because I'm having too much fun really to care yeah so it was a case of potentially like not ignoring them but just being like okay yeah I'm having I'm I'm having a good time and your opinion is your opinion sort of that sort of mentality of it yeah yeah and I think that comes back to like the people pleasing tendencies and kind of trying to manage how other people view you which isn't always in alignment with yourself if you're trying to manage everyone else's expectations and fit into all these different types of boxes where I think one of the most useful things is like knowing like actually embodying someone who um knows that people are going to judge you no matter what you do or no matter what you say there's always going to be at least one person who's going to judge you so why wouldn't you just live your life for yourself and then you'll actually attract the people that genuinely like you for who you are yeah Um, which has been yeah one of the things that I for ages was like trying to convince myself and like making myself believe that but I do believe I'm very much on the path of more believing that than not because as you said earlier like it's still a recovering people pleasing tendency so there are still moments where I'm like Ooh. um but yeah it's like being a walnut and going over that and showing up for the person that is confident and taking that action anyways even though you're still kind of scared is is one of the really good things to help with that process yeah walking with that like scared feeling and I've I've found that I I pick up on it a lot better now and I actually get a lot of like bodily reactions when something doesn't feel right anymore where um for a long time I just would go and go and go and go and burn out and people please and do all the things um and it's no wonder I felt so tired and didn't like myself and all of those sort of things because I was at such a disconnect with what I actually wanted to be doing thinking and feeling um that I had almost like just numbed myself to the fact that oh you don't matter (laughs) Um, you know, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's cool when you can get to a place like where I feel like we both sort of are now, Jelly, where it's just like, that wasn't right. Now what, you know, rather than like going on with something that feels kind of icky and Mm. the things. Yeah. And I think it's really important to remember as well, like how I kind of view things now is like, there's never really a wrong decision. There's just like decisions that will help you like any decision that you make will help you grow so it's like being nervous of not making a decision or not doing something um is like better than not making that decision at all it's like any type of movement even if you're not really sure about it even if you do something and it ends up not being a good decision that's something that you can learn from and now you know okay I don't want that and I do want this so how can we move more to our towards what we do want um Hmm not allowing yeah the making of the decision and worried about whether it's going to be right or wrong make you not make a decision essentially yeah yeah and I find once (laughs) it's it's the hardest part me and my um my best friend talked about this offline for for quite a a time where that weird limbo phase of not deciding something Mm -hmm. um 
oh god it is so draining and in hindsight when you're looking back you're like oh yeah it's fine but when you're in it it is so all-consuming and big and hard and you just don't know what to do with yourself um but then once you've just decided something it just kind of just you just kind of go take the downhill route and um and kind of roll with it but that that part of it is is so hard um Mm -hmm. and Jilly I'd love to know sort of what are your because you, you, I know that you're like in the woo-woo, you love um, spiritual tools and I'm sure you have your own little tool, toolbox of all the modalities and all the things that you like to use. I would love to know when you're feeling a little bit butthole because we're walnuts and we do and we're humans um, and when things aren't looking or feeling so bright, uh, I call it waking up wrong, um, Do you? what are your sort of like go-to things if there's a walnut listening who might just be feeling like a bit of a butthole today and just need a little a little unicorn spark up the butt yeah so my number one thing is I'm sure you're aware if you've watched any of my stories is I love to dance <laughs> I was um, hoping I you would love, say this I fucking love dancing it just it works for every mood every mood happy yeah. or sad or anything I actually um late last week so maybe like five days ago did have a few things that triggered some emotions within me so I was feeling quite lethargic for a few days and I did cry for a couple of days and I was like oh everything doesn't feel quite good but I think um I did dance to like shake some energy around and again with the whole movement and trying to move rather than being stagnant in your decision making the energy in your body is kind of the same so if you're feeling kind of very like lethargic or like not really wanting to and just sitting in this energy that's kind of heavy it's good if you can move around so like I know um I shake my hips a lot because I know a lot of trauma kind of gets stored in the hips but Mm -hmm. I just it doesn't matter what I look like when I dance I kind of just am I move however my body wants to move I really tune into my body and try to see what kind of movements it wants to do um and then another thing is speaking very kindly to myself um I think yeah, especially, yeah, late last week when I went through those couple emotional moments, it's like sitting with myself, accepting that this is just how I feel right now. Again, speaking what I was saying earlier, like my joy for life does not fade even when I'm not feeling the best. And I think knowing that my joy for life doesn't fade, it has allowed me to accept the more difficult emotions because I know now, because I know in the spiritual communities, I know it can get kind of, um, complicated when everyone's like you have to be like happy all the time otherwise like you're going to manifest all this crap that you don't want it's like that's not actually true it's like your core your core emotion really is like what is um doing the attraction like just because you aren't feeling the best doesn't mean you're gonna manifest really crappy things it's not the case at all but to accept those feelings as what they are and just allowing yourself to be and sit in those feelings and hold yourself and be kind to yourself and speak to your inner child. And if you need blankets and stuffed animals, like go grab those. Um, If you need to open up to friends and be more vulnerable, which is still a practice for me. um, That's what I was, I sent a few voice clips to friends and like was crying in the voice clips was just like very vulnerable for me to do. Cause, but it's like, again, being brave and stepping up and doing difficult things with the people that you trust, I think as well is really, really important. Um, Mm -hmm. and like any, any kind of soothing things, like sometimes I'll take a bath. I also took myself to the beach yesterday and just like cleanse myself in the ocean. Um, yeah, there's so many, so many different things that I could go on and on about, but we'll leave it at those few for now. I love that. And I think a really important part of, of all of the little, um, tools that you sort of just mentioned is, is creating that safe space for yourself. Mm -hmm to do those things, to find the collections of people that you can do the crying voice notes to or the people that you can be a big banana in front of. I recently, first beach swim of the year, and I realized I hadn't even swum in the ocean all of last year, and it made me really upset because I live so close to it and I just don't do it as often as like I genuinely want to. But first beach swim, you're just reminding me now, and then you mentioned ocean again, oh. where – um. I just felt a bit seedy. I had had a couple of wines and I just wanted to be in the ocean. It was really important to me to do this on this trip up north. The weather was like nice and warm. 
And I just, we started just sort of like jumping over the waves, me and one of my really good friends. And yeah. I started just like jumping up towards the wave, like a big, like half a lump potato and like nice. splashing down. Like it just, oh my gosh, I'm getting teary because I looked like an absolute twat. My partner, Geordie, was like walking along the beach and he's like, yeah, I saw you like jumping on the waves and then your legs would fly up and it looked like really hilarious. But um. Yeah, I looked like such a banana, but I just had such a good time that I couldn't stop doing this like weird belly flop into the water, like in a child work, I suppose you could kind of label it as that. Um, but I have been not lucky enough. I've been conscious enough to have a friend who I can swim in the ocean and belly flop into the waves with and a partner who can walk along the beach and see me doing that and just smile at me and be like, there goes Laz again, <laughs> being a little beach whale banana flopping into the you know like <laughs> I've created those relationships um through my walnut journey whereas people who I used to run around with and there's nothing wrong with them and there's nothing wrong with me but um those spaces where uh, you know I could potentially feel embarrassed so I wouldn't have belly flopped onto the waves or, or thing little really really small little things like that that I think it's really important to notice as a walnut and have yeah. that safety within yourself to be able to do those coping mechanisms or those little special tools yeah 100 percent. yeah yeah oh thank you so much for for sharing those I had a question and I've forgotten it now because I was too busy talking about my my belly flopping around oh I remember Jilly it's your dancing yes. how yeah okay first of all did you shit your pants when you decided I'm going to show my dancing on my stories like what was the tell me the feeling like I know there are a lot of walnuts that listen to this podcast that are like, oh my God, the social media thing, like, um, you know, and for me too, starting even starting a podcast or on my Instagram and things, it still is a walnutting to just put myself out there. So please talk about the dancing thing. Um, I want to just go down that road really, really quickly because it is a thing that it is especially dancing. It's a thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember the first time I ever posted a dancing video because, you know, my whole thing is to show people kind of how I live my life, to show them like how easy it is to find, to connect with your joy and find magic in everyday life. Um, and the, yeah, the first time I posted it, it was like, yeah, again, that like one, two, three, click. Yeah. I don't know how many times I counted to three. I don't think that it was the first, I think it, yeah, definitely more than one time. Um, but I was I was like, oh my God, like people are, I'm letting people in. Cause I don't, I just do it at the time um, when I was in the share house, I would just do it in my room by myself. I'm still by myself, but I now live in my own place, which is way nicer. But um, yeah, I was like really intimate time with myself that I'm sharing with the world, like a way that I really connect with myself. Um, and yeah, it was, it was terrifying. And the first like maybe few times it was terrifying. And I'm like, oh my God, am I, am I dancing too sexy here? Like, what are people going to think? And now it's kind of gotten to the point where like I use social media now as kind of like a game. And I still, there are so, still certain boundaries that I'm learning and certain things I'll post that the, maybe the next day I'm like, oh, that didn't, it's not feeling as good that I posted that anymore, but I'm leaving it because it's, you know, it's mm -hmm. a learning experience for me. And it's, it's all just practice being like, well, I'm just going to post this more so to like learn how to regulate my nervous system throughout the process so that when I start sharing bigger things I've kind of led myself up to that um but yeah I mean that first time was was terrifying yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it just it is it's like the, it's the it's the weirdest thing yet me as a social media user like all walnut Wednesday stuff aside I love watching people dance and being free and stuff like that but it's just such a different brain thing to be able to do that. And I remember at the event where we first met in real life, um, mm -hmm. Kayla Anderson, beautiful banana. She's been on the podcast. I actually must talk to her again because she's done so much cool stuff since then. But um, she talked about, you know, you go to these events, you go to these like retreats and things and they say, let's have a dance party. And it is so fucking uncomfortable and I feel embarrassed. I feel weird. And she was talking about how she never used to be able to, you know, dance unless she was drunk because you just are not in your head and things. And now she's off going to like, like alcohol free festivals and like dancing around and she does all the things quite like you as well, Jilly. And I just, 
it just feels so weird to do and i it, i can't pass that that sort of discomfort while at the same time i do actually wiggle and jiggle around a little bit when i am on my own so uh, yeah. yeah it's a whole it's a whole thing and is there like is there anything particular or like tangible that you did apart from the one, two, three, just do it? Or was it a just do it moment, like to decide to to post? Kind of a just do it moment. Yeah. yeah. If I really want to show people my, in you know, my life and how I do things internally and how I help myself and connect with myself um, in hopes that it inspires them to in different ways to tr- connect with themselves, um, it was, it's really important to me. It's like the, the end goal is more important than like my fear in the moment. And again, like I'm still working up to that end goal. Um, I still do have a lot of fears, but I'm, I'm working with those day by day. Um, mm-hmm. and I'm really proud with how I've, where I've gotten so far with it all, but, um, yeah, it is. Yeah. It is a just do it moment for me. It's kind of like, gets to that point where I'm like, oh, I just have to fucking do it. Just do it. And you're just yeah. Like, like, <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, I love I, I love that. Thank you. And b- before we wrap up, Jilly, is there anything sort of like on your heart that you feel like we haven't covered that you want to share to a to a walnut listening that might need some advice? Mm. Um, I think one of the most important things that I see a lot of, especially people with people pleasing tendencies, what they struggle with is what they actually want. Mm. Um, so I think taking time out in the quiet, either in a meditation or just in nature and just really spend time connecting with yourself and asking what you want. Um, because yeah, I think we have, we're, we've been so focused on trying to manage everyone else and focus on what everyone else wants for so long that when we actually finally start to ask ourselves what we want, we don't actually know. So to start to cultivate that relationship with yourself is, I think that's a really good stepping stone is trying to figure out what you want and what feels good to you and really connecting with your, with your mind and your body as well, because your, your body knows. Um, and I know you mentioned something about this earlier, like you know, you can feel in your body when something isn't quite right. So if you can connect with that, um, then that's a really good starting point. Oh my gosh, Jilly, I actually love that. And I have practiced that before because yeah, I have gotten to those points where I'm like, oh, I don't actually know myself and I don't actually know what I want. And I, the reactions from others, it's like that there's this meme, I can't think of it at the top of my head about, you know, once you start setting boundaries, the people that you know were taking not taking advantage of you but that were reaping the benefits of your lack of boundary um they kind of fizzle away and they're like oh shit she means business I can't like walk all over this instance anymore you know um oh I'm really glad you raised that thank you so much for sharing um before the token question Jilly if people um listening are like oh my god I love this unicorn I love this banana I want to go and watch the dancing where is the best place for a walnut to to snoop you and find you and connect with you more? Um, I would say Instagram. So my Instagram, which is Jillian Elise um, with an underscore at the end um, would be the best way. That's where I post all my dancing videos. <laughs> Love it. I also have like, uh, I've created a Spotify playlist with all the music that I am currently kind of dancing to, which I update when I feel like it's sometimes new songs go on, sometimes old ones come off. But yeah, I have a playlist with a link in there as well if people want to have a little dance with me. Oh, I love this. I love this so much. Okay, and Walnut, I will link them in the show notes so that you can go and snoop away and go and have a dance party literally right now if you want to. Um, Jilly, token question to all my friends that I have had on the podcast. Oh, it, this has been a really great chat, by the way. I just I just love you so yeah, much. Yeah, I feel like but, I could talk to you forever. <laughs> I know. I know. I like what well, I have so many other things I want to say, but tell me, Jilly. As a recovering people pleaser, boundary setter, fellow walnut and all the things, what does being a walnut mean to you? Being a walnut to me means um, just connecting with myself as I am now and accepting myself as I am today. At the same time, um, doing kind of, yeah, being brave and stepping up to the person that you're wanting to become 
who has stronger boundaries, who has a better connection with themselves, a better connection with their intuition, more joy for life. Um, but I think, yeah, it's again, like the balance of knowing who you are today and being in complete acceptance of that person while wanting to grow at the same time and taking the necessary action, which is the walnutting to reach your next goals or reach your next self or the person who you have always been shedding all the layers of crap that we've picked up throughout our life. So yeah, that's what I would have to say. Oh, I had got chills throughout that. Thank you so much. That was such a delicious, delicious description. And Jilly, I, I'm so happy we we finally like having having this chat on Walnut Wednesday. It's was it was so nice to bump into at that cacao ceremony and just to see you oh, on the air and to see you doing your thing so just oh my gosh I just really appreciate you popping on thank you so much yeah thank you so much for having me <laughs> and Walnut thank you so much for all your time and for listening to us please help, feel free to take a little screeny shot of us and tag us on the instagrams and let us know when you're listening i'm sure jilly um is free to answer any questions if you have any as am i um but make sure you go and check out the the stories of this wonderful magnificent woman um and again one more time jilly for all you do in the world and for all that you are all all who you are that's not a word but for just being yourself and really shining a light on the fact that it is okay to be yourself and setting that example to other walnuts who feel like that's probably the hardest thing ever and for really taking those steps. Just thank you for setting that example for for us all. And again, for being here. I love you. You're beautiful. You're delicious. Thank you. I do. (laughs) Have a happy, happy Walnut Wednesday and I will talk to you next week. Bye.